proud to be joined with Connor Mance. Connor, I don't know if you know this, but yesterday we had a Olympic trials draft. You were the number Perfect. one male selected. You're on my team. So hey, awesome. I would, I would be hope, hoping that you would do well at the Olympic trials anyway, but now I'm really rooting for you. So we're about what? Nine days out from the trials. What are your thoughts heading in? Uh, I'm just excited. It's kind of been, I don't know, every four, I mean, the Olympics is every four years. And so I just, it's kind of exciting after how 20, I was fifth in the 10K in 2021. And I'm kind of like been itching to, to have another chance at it, but maybe just excited to run another marathon. Your three marathons have gone well, especially your two on flat courses. You ran 208.16 in your de debut well, last year, well, two years ago in Chicago. Followed that up with 207.47 in Chicago this year. Flat, fast courses you've done very well. I would say that sets you up for the trials very well. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I, I, I think I could, I could run well on a hilly course, but I just need to make sure I keep my, uh, my emotions in check and not go out with the, the leaders. But I, yeah. I, I think that's a good assessment. I've done well in flat courses. And you've got the fastest, you know, seed time coming in. Do you view yourself as the favorite? Do you think like that? Sort of, how do you assess the field? I, I, I don't know. I think I definitely see myself as a, as a favorite to make the team um, and take one of those, you know, top two spots. Maybe, you know, we, we don't know about third place. Um, chances of us getting third i have no idea what they are uh, but or getting three spots but i i see myself as one of the favorites i think i've i've been pretty consistent um every time i've raced i'm not like my performances i feel like are all pretty close together for the most part like i'll have an occasional bad race but most of my races are are fairly consistent and when you say us do you mean Clayton Young? Yeah, you, Clayton and myself. And how much of your training have you done with Clayton? I know John's going to ask you some questions here. He's, he's been stalking your Strava, but a workout just got posted today on YouTube. We'll put a link to it. Um, you guys did four by, I think, three mile. But it seems like you and Clayton have been joined by the hip for, what, the last year in training? But how much of your training have you done for, for this build up? Most of our training, the, this build up, it's kind of, kind of been funny. Um, cause coach I stone was very, he liked how Chicago went. So he's, he's having us do exactly what we did for Chicago. And it's like, okay, like you guys both did this at Chicago. Like, let's just replicate that. So, um, yeah, every workout, almost every easy run, not almost every easy run, but at least half of them are together. John, do you want to jump in and. Grill yeah, I about mean, a Strava activity. This is something that happens on the message board. Is everyone they try to do the Strava analysis of exactly who's in shape and who's not, and that sort of thing. And that you know, your Strava account is public, and right. there are two notable things I think that would jump out to anyone who looks at it. One is there's a two week gap after your run at the Manchester Road Race where you don't have any activities logged at all. So what's the explanation for that? Were you running? Were you hurt? What was the deal? Yeah, um, I haven't really told too many people about it, but now that I'm in shape, I feel like I can show my cards uh, a little bit. Yeah, I had a I had a stress reaction in my femur that kind of popped up right before the Manchester Road Race. Didn't know what it was, just was like, just kind of dropped my mileage considerably heading into that race and was like, oh, well, you know what, I'll just, I'll be able to drop my mileage and taper and then it started bugging me about two days before and the day beforehand um quite a bit and so i changed my flights home and i i wasn't actually going to start the race but then i said okay like if it hurts at all in the warm-up i'll i won't start if it hurts at all during the race i'll drop out felt fine during the race i mean it in my mind it was like well like i've had a few stress reactions there before it doesn't really feel like it but it might be one um, so it was like the day before the race, I changed my flight. So I fly back earlier and then I, uh, set up a doctor's appointment and an MRI so I could get those in as soon as possible. Um, sadly it was a stress reaction, took me out for a few, for two weeks. And then I, 
been, but I, I, I kind of just privatized a lot of my runs since then. Um, at first it was just like, oh, I'll make them public right before the trials, but it, it was just kind of like as a way of like, all right, I might not be running, but I'm going to get sneaky good or at least sneaky as, be as sneaky as I can. I don't want to completely make my, uh, my Strava private, but I'll make some runs private. Okay. So that was my other question is, you know, if you look at the mileage totals, weekly mileage, since you've returned to running, uh, none of them are above about 71 miles a week, which is a lot lower than you usually do. But I've also noticed you're only running, you know, there's only four or five entries per week in that span. So are you, is that like this actual mileage you're running or are there other runs that you just haven't logged on there and you're doing more? There, there, there's a lot of runs. I just, I keep probably half of them or, or so private. And I'll probably make them all public right before the trials because it, it was kind of like, crap, I'm injured. Like, how much do I want to show to other people of, like, I'm hurt? But then it was like, now I'm at the point where I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll probably go back and make them public pretty soon. But my, my fitness is there, um, at least as far as I can tell. I mean, you can only really tell so much from a workout, and I haven't raced since the Manchester race, so. Right. But those those two weeks after Manchester, like, did you not run at all, or there were runs in there and they just weren't public? Uh, I was like, I was on like an Alter G treadmill or Bruce treadmill or like uh, biking, swimming, or I didn't swim this time, but I did um, the Arc Trainer, if you know what that is. So Parker I just Parker Valby's favorite. What? Parker Valby's favorite. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a lot of people love it. Uh, Whitney Orton does a ton on the arc trainer probably shouldn't say that but she's kind of been the inspiration for the arc trainer because it's just like dang she gets fit and then so when i heard this stuff about parker valbio that's who i thought of was whitney yeah well the one other thing i wanted to ask before i let well and close it out is when you get back to sort of running on solid ground is it because your leg is feeling back to normal that the injury is healed or is it shoot the trials are almost here i need to start you know, running, logging real running workouts? Uh, it, it was because things were feeling better. Um, I, I wanted to be out. Or, um, I definitely wanted to be out running like earlier. And and coach Iastone was very much like, hey, like, it, he, he told me this four years ago and I got hurt right before the last marathon trials. He was just like, he's like, look, half the people that show up on that day who are going to be competitors, they're not healthy. Like, you, you, he's like, if you're healthy, you really only have to, uh, like, have to be your competitors. You have to be to make the team. And he, he was just very confident and like, if you're healthy, you're going to be fine. It doesn't matter. Like, if you run your workouts really fast or really slow, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Just be healthy. So, just kind of took that as kind of my mantra: is get healthy and then, I don't know get some good workouts in and be ready for the trials. Yeah. Coach Ed, I stand two time Olympian. So yeah. what, what advice did he give you about the trials? I guess the, mar the marathon trials, which is new for you. Yeah. I, I think, um, I mean, we, we, we try and bug him a lot. He's very, he doesn't really talk about his day that much, but just like, don't, I mean, a few things I won, don't ever do it. He says he's the best shape he was ever in was in 96. And that's the year he didn't make it um, in, on the team. And, um, but also like being healthy. He's just very big on make sure you're healthy. But he's also a very hands off coach. He never gets like, I don't know, never really gets mad about us doing one thing or the other. He's just very like, figure yourself out and then I'll help lead and guide you. But don't, don't ever do it. And one thing you guys don't have in Utah is heat. What have you done to prepare for, for the heat in Orlando? Uh, done a bunch of sauna. Like, finish a run, go to the sauna, or I'll, I'll get like, a, I don't know, like some rain, rain jackets or like sauna suits and just run on that on a treadmill. Haven't done that as much, but most of it has been like I finish a run and then we, me, Clayton, um, Sam Schilling has joined us for the last couple months. So well, me, Clayton, Jared, and Sam will go to the sauna after our runs. Is Ed coaching Sam? Uh, right now, yeah. Oh, interesting. 
I was going to pick Sam in my contest, but he didn't run very well in my draft. He didn't run very well at Houston. Was that sort of more of a training he, run for him? No, nah, he was pretty sick. He like, from from what we've talked to him, when I asked him about it after the race, he's just like, he's like, dude, I just like, the moment the gun went off, I didn't feel good. And I just thought I'd warm up into it, but I felt worse and worse as the race went on. So... His he didn't do the a lot better than that. Okay, and he didn't do the three by four mile, the four by three mile rec workout with you guys. So, so does he just no, do some of them? No, he didn't. He didn't do that workout with us because that was the same week as Houston. Okay, so he was he was trying to taper for Houston, trying to secure that third spot, but then shows up and on the start line feels awful. It's like, well, I guess I'll just. Uh, he just kind of had to run it because he was there. All right, we, we said we, we wouldn't keep you 10 minutes. It's been more right. than 10, but what would it mean to make the Olympic team? You know, it, it would mean a lot, but also I need to keep uh, my mind in check. You know, it's, I don't know, it, it's kind of been a dream. So a dream, it would be a dream come true, but I also need to keep in check that, like, if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. It's nothing. It's like there's always more teams and more races to make. So. Oh, one more question. We started a better running shoe site on Let's Run. What shoes have you been training in and what shoe will you be racing in? Uh, I'll race in one of the Alpha Fly iterations. Still trying to figure out which one exactly. And then uh, training a lot in the Vomero, but I use probably four or five different Nike shoes, such as like, I'll, I'll use the Pegasus, the Invincible. The, the Vomero is my favorite, but I like to switch things out pretty often. All right. We appreciate it. Hope to see you in Orlando. Good luck. Thank you.